afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Farmers markets across the state are in full gear. The markets provide fresh food from local farms. They also allow us to connect with our friends and neighbors and to talk directly to the farmers who grow the food. Creating and growing community connections through a farmers market is something that a team of students at U32 High School found in Montpelier. The students produced a short documentary about the Montpelier market and about the area farmers who grow and sell their food. Here's the work of the U32 students. Over 50 vendors gather each Saturday throughout the spring and summer months to sell locally grown and made products unique to the state of Vermont and outstanding in quality. There is live music every week, which makes the market a gathering place for residents across central Vermont. Vendors sell fresh fruit, vegetables, meats, specialty cheeses, bread, ethnic foods, herbs, plants, flowers, honey and maple syrup. The list goes on and on. When I think of the market here, probably the first thing that comes to mind is just knowing all the different farmers I know. I know the cheese maker whose cheese I eat. I know the farmers who raise the animals. I know how they raise the animals. We met with local farmers who sell at the market and asked them what the farmer's market means to them. Most places we only interact with the buyer or the person who stocks the shelving and we don't get to meet the customer directly and we really love the time that we spend with people one-on-one -on -one and answering questions and getting to tell them what we do that's different. When we go to the market we meet the, the customers and the people are really friendly, they love coming to see us, uh, they love to meet the farmer, and they just, uh, they're a lot of fun, the people are. Um, so, Saturdays, if that's all we had to do, it'd be a great time. I was just walking in the market today and thinking about community and seeing two people that obviously knew each other but don't see each other regularly greet with big smiles and, and happy voices. Okay. Definitely helps build a sense of community. Alan LePage, a local farmer, reflects on how the community has benefited since he, among others, first founded the market over 37 years ago. Part of selling at the market is the people. Um, I got customers that have been buying from me for 30 years, and their characters. They are friends in some instances. I, I've known them a long time, and I'm happy and proud to be able to provide them with really high nutrient foods that taste great. Keeps a lot of people downtown playing music, hanging out, drinking coffee, doing a little shopping, going to the farmer's market for a stroll with their dog or people watching or whatever it is they're doing. And it definitely builds a community. People go there to socialize. Before the farmer's market started in downtown Montpelier on Saturday, you could hear a pin drop. The Montpelier Farmer's Market isn't just a place people go to get their produce. They go there because they love it. They go there to meet friends and family. They go there because it's open and social. It makes them feel at home. The market is a place that grows community.
Well, as you just saw in the credits, a team of five students from New 32 High School produced that documentary, and two of the team members are with me now. I want to welcome Anya Kennedy and Emily Richards. Thanks so much for being in, and congratulations on your projects. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, nice. I want to know who your other teammates were in the project, first of all. Okay, well, we teamed up with three other girls, mm -hmm. and Araceli Rebman was our social media director, so she got our film out there and sent it out, mm -hmm. which was really helpful. Um, Lindsay Nortze was the storyboard director, so she really laid down all the clips and helped us with that and how our movie was basically going to be laid out. Mm -hmm. And then um, Taylor Forrest was the research director, so she was very helpful at the beginning part of the process where she was researching the farms and helping us with all of that. So. And so you worked in the school's media lab. Tell us a little bit about the media lab. Well, it's how our school, whenever we produce films or other um, media, we use the media lab as a way to send that out to people and reach out. And every year um, it gets used by one class or another in order to put that out there and produce films from our school. And how did you decide that you wanted to focus on the Montpelier Farmers Market? Well, we wanted to focus on it for a couple reasons. One being our teacher, John Antonucci, assigned it in our Democratic Roots class. He didn't assign specifically the farmer's market as a topic, but we had to find a place that really built a sense of community and and or contributed to the local democracy. And we just thought the Montpelier Farmer's Market was mm -hmm. a perfect example of that because it's a place where consumers in all walks of life come to directly interact with the people that grow and sell their food. And so that definitely builds a connection and a sense of community, we thought. Mm -hmm. okay. Was there something about the market that you learned that you didn't expect or left a significant impression on you? Well, I didn't really realize how intertwined everyone was at the market and that there are people who've been going for over 10 years just to go see the same farms or who've been there since the very start of the market over 30 years ago. So it was really interesting to see that relationship that really was there because of the market. And have you had any reaction to your final piece? Well, I, I know that for me, I think that we're all just so proud of how it turned out mm -hmm. because we put so much time and effort into it. We only had a limited amount of time to make this film, and so we had to come in before school, after school. We had to work on it outside of school. And I think just all that hard work really paid off, and I'm proud of mm -hmm. what we came up with. And I think people would be surprised to learn how much you had to shoot to produce yeah. this, this short film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many hours was that? I would say we had at least seven hours of footage yeah. that we put in and had to go through and pick, you know, what clip was the best. <laughs> and um, each little part took so much more time to really produce than we realized in the beginning. Yeah. I really love the way it starts, just with the natural sound. Mm -hmm. and, and it's really amazing the impact that saying nothing mm -hmm. can mm -hmm. have. No, I mean... That was such a great shoot day. We had this idea to follow Alan LePage's car to the farmer's market mm -hmm. to really show how these farmers wake up early to come bring fresh produce to these consumers. And that's really what we wanted to get across. So, And when we got there, we were not expecting it to be such good footage. <laughs> it was beautiful. The sun was rising. And at, at 5 a.m., it was hard to, <laughs> hard to really realize how good it would be because you, we were all tired. And mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's 5 a.m., but it, it just turned out so great, and I'm really happy with the footage we got. So. so what did you learn about filmmaking or production through this project? I would say, I mean, the biggest thing for me is how much time it takes and how meticulous you have to be when filming to make sure that the lighting is right and to make sure that the sound is coming out good, and then going through and editing and making sure, are we following the storyboard? You know, Does this clip look weird with the sequence that's followed or is following? And so really getting a look at the process, I would say was the biggest thing that I learned from this, and especially about filmmaking and the time. Yeah, I mean, we were using all of this high-tech equipment that mm -hmm. I don't think any of us have ever <laughs> used before, so. I learned a lot about just how to use that stuff and how to adjust different lighting levels and how to use the camera and adjust saturation and contrast on the editing mm -hmm. software. And I think 
that's just really great stuff to learn, especially in this day and age when everything, when learning how to use different communications is so important. So. And so were the people willing to help you with, with their family? I know you visited a couple of different farms. Yeah. Were the farmers good sports about that? Yeah, they were really absolutely. excited. They opened us, mm -hmm. they opened up their homes and their farms to us. And I know it's, I know how hard it can be to sit through an interview when you're trying to work on your farm and have mm -hmm. this lighting thing <laughs> being pointed at your face and a boom mic right in your face. And But they were just so helpful and they mm -hmm. worked with us really well. And They're just, very yeah. eager to show us, yeah. you know, what happened at their farm and what was unique about how they did things. And it was just really enlightening to see yeah. how eager they were to help out. What would you say was the most challenging aspect of the project? The most challenging, I think, was collaborating as a group. From the start, <laughs> we all had different ideas mm -hmm. of how this movie was going to be laid out and what we really wanted the story to be. And I think just getting all of our voices in mm -hmm. there was pretty difficult at the start. But towards the end, we made some compromises, worked together, and I think we came out with a good product that we all really felt proud of. So, What was the most memorable thing that you were going to take away from the project? I think that the most memorable thing that I could take away from this was not only the process of producing a film, but just really having to communicate. And mm -hmm. in school, you don't really get that um, option much to really get out there in the community and be on your own trying to produce something of this yeah. size. And so being able to do that and learn those skills was something that I'll be able to always carry with me. And like yeah. Anya said, the actual filmmaking process itself is so important today with um, so much media inflicting um, on our lives. It's really Well, there are images everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Of course. Now, did your feelings about the project change from when you first started to when you yes, finished? <laughs> definitely. At the start of this project, again, like I said, we had a very limited <clears throat> amount of time to film and to edit. So I think it was hard for all of us to see the end Mm -hmm. like results because we were just so stressed about time and it was finals week and we were all studying for our tests so mm -hmm. I mean we we just really had to focus and like get down and try and do this film but it was difficult mm -hmm. I mean. and moving step by step yeah. and the d I remember one of the days where we got all of our film put together it was so exciting to be able to see it all roll <laughs> and mm -hmm. just yeah. to have everything fit together after weeks of thinking yeah. about it, but never actually getting there. I remember this one moment where we were in the um, lab room and editing our film, and we had just put these two clips together that we had been trying to put together, and it just worked so perfectly. And I remember Emily and I just jumping out of our chairs. <laughs> we were so excited. Everyone else was in the room trying to work on their film, and we felt bad afterwards for distracting <laughs> them. But it was just that moment when you know that everything is fitting together so mm -hmm. well. And you know, it, was, it was a really proud moment, I think. Do you think you'll do another one, another project like this? Um, do you want to do another project like this? It's difficult. It yeah. takes a lot of time, but mm -hmm. I think it was a really great opportunity for us, mm -hmm. and we learned a lot. So I would definitely be willing to do another project like this. Mm -hmm. And so, what were some of the other projects that the students worked on? You did the farmers market, but mm -hmm. what were some of the other ones? Um, some of the other groups chose to do the state house lawn, uh, the skinny pancake, and the wayside. Um, yeah, and mostly centralized in Montpelier, but mm -hmm. a lot of them just, you know, everyone had the same idea at points, but we had to pick and choose and narrow yeah. it down yeah. to what was most accessible and what really related to community and democracy yeah, exactly. the most. Yeah. So would you say that the overall the project was a success? I, yeah, yeah. I think so. We got a lot <laughs> of positive feedback, mm -hmm. so. That's cool. Um, so yeah. is uh, the video online? Can people watch it someplace? Yeah, it's on YouTube and it's also on the Montpelier Farmers Market website. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's just on, if you look up U32 Media Lab on YouTube, it should come up. And, okay. And, and the also, title of the film is Growing Community. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, terrific. Well, I want to thank you both for joining me today. I really yeah, enjoyed so watching much. the project. You did a really thank good you. job. Thank you. That's yes. our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. Thank you.